Don't you hate that too? You are unsuspectingly walking through the forest on a beautiful autumn day and are suddenly attacked by a velociraptor. I'll tell you at the end of the video how best to behave to survive such an attack. So if you are in immediate danger, simply skip the video a bit. The velociraptor was discovered in 1922 during an expedition to Mongolia. At that time, only the skull, an enlarged claw, and a few bone fragments were found. The name, Velociraptor, comes from ancient Greek and means, fast predator. It belongs to the group of dromaeosaurids, commonly referred to as, raptors. As fossil finds from 1971 suggest, Velociraptors were not afraid to hunt larger prey. The fossils of a Velociraptor and a Protoceratops captured a fight scene between the two animals for eternity. The animals may have been buried by sand during a fight or drowned in water. Another theory is that the Velociraptor killed the Protoceratops, was crushed by its corpse, and was then covered by sand or water. There is no clear evidence of pack behavior by Velociraptors, but fossil footprints of different specimens that were found in the same place suggest that Velociraptors might live in a pack. Velociraptors were smarter than most dinosaurs. Most dinosaurs had reptilian brains and were therefore not very intelligent. The Stegosaurus is considered to be the dinosaur with the smallest brain. It was about the size of a walnut. So tiny considering it was an 8 to 9 meters, or 29.5 feet, long animal. Velociraptor brains were more evolved and more akin to birds than reptiles, suggesting that velociraptors were indeed very intelligent. They probably also had very good eyesight, similar to today's birds of prey. Raptors are believed to have been warm-blooded, meaning that, unlike most other reptiles, their core body temperature was generated through metabolism, just like mammals and birds. Raptors are rarely portrayed realistically in the media, which is understandable because, let's face it, old-school naked velociraptors look pretty damn cool. With that being said, velociraptors were feathered. They weren't as large as is commonly believed, but about knee-deep in a full-grown man. Contrary to what is claimed in movies, they did not use their sickle claws to rip open the belly of their prey, but only to hold on to larger prey. In experiments with a pig carcass, paleontologists found that while raptors' sickle claws could puncture and scratch, they couldn't rip open an entire abdomen. Nobody knows what a velociraptor really looks like. Maybe it was colorful like a parrot, or maybe it was gray like a parrot. But most likely it was monochromatic. How do I know? Because the color of the plumage depends on the environment and raptors could not fly. Most ground birds, as well as most birds of prey, are solid and dark, more gray or brown because such plumage serves as better camouflage. This is what a forest looked like 150 million years ago. Sorry, wrong picture. Most of the plants are green or brown and a brightly colored velociraptor would be poked out of the thicket like a clown at a funeral. The depiction of raptors in modern pop culture is probably fair with their aggressive behavior. Dinosaurs shared the same ancestors as crocodiles and alligators. They are descended from archosaurs and were probably highly aggressive. So how do you survive a velociraptor attack? You might just give it a kick. The velociraptor was only about 50 centimeters tall, which equals 20 inches, unlike what's portrayed in the media. Anyone who manages to be eaten by an animal the size of a turkey deserves it according to natural selection. Since velociraptors are mainly found in Asia and around 70 to 80 million years ago, the chances of being attacked while going for a hike are low. If you or your loved ones are into dinosaurs, visit my dinosaur shop at iheartdinosaurs.com.